Hello, I'm Amy, and I should explain that I have Tourette's syndrome which as you probably know is a disorder that results in foul outbursts. It is out of my control and I regret any embarrassment it may cause you, but fuck you all in the fucking asses, you fat, turd covered, dickheads, you piss drenched, pig ass suckers, you fucking dog dick lickers, and now Sufi George. Hello and welcome to the Sufi George Mission. And thank you Amy for that certainly excellent introduction. Today's talk concerns the nature of truth and comes from my book Mindblow, Understanding Consciousness. As we discuss the nature of truth, you will be wondering if what I have to say agrees with what you think. When we agree, you'll think I'm quite a marvel, and when we disagree, you'll think I'm wrong. This is how we are. But it's too bad because it makes it difficult for us to approach new ideas without prejudice, with an open mind. The search for truth requires self-honesty. Self-honesty reveals that we have doubts about many things, that we don't really know everything. It reveals where we've sold ourselves a bill of goods because something felt right and not because it was the God's honest truth. It reveals where we've settled for less than a best effort in arriving at what we believe to be true where we've taken the easy way out. Many people think truth is made of steel. Even if it were, steel, like everything else, is made of frequency waves. These waves are in motion, so there is constant change in the fundamental aspect of steel. It is not really standing still, and it is not permanent. At the practical level, this is no problem, and that is the way it is with truth, too. At the practical level, Truth can be functional and useful, but it cannot be permanent and unchanging. Dogmatism of any kind is alien to the nature of truth, even when we believe some dogma as the absolute truth. If you've looked at several dogmatic systems, you've noticed that every one of them claims to have the absolute truth, which wouldn't be possible if there were only one absolute truth. In the past, before mass communications, rapid travel and other changes that have made it a small world, People lived in groups that were often influenced very little by outside groups. In those days, it was possible for a community to share a dogmatic belief system without encountering much adverse influence from other communities. Today, it is a simple matter to learn about other religions and metaphysical systems, so dogmatists frequently encounter conflicting beliefs from outside. Self-honesty, which dogmatists deliberately avoid, raises the questions which one is really the truth. Why would one bother to argue over one's truth? If you know that something is true, why does it bother you that someone else thinks differently? Why is it important to be right in the eyes of others? Isn't it satisfying enough to know that one is right inside? Why do you care about what someone else thinks is true? Why defend your truth? Why reinforce your truth? Is it because we doubt? Because we know, down deep, that maybe our truth isn't so true. That we, aren't really sure? What we call truth is relative truth, relative to the person who believes it. Your truth is true for you, but not necessarily for me or anyone else. Our truths are necessarily different, and that's why we were able to argue about them. Each of us can only believe such truth. We can never know that we've arrived at the perfect last word. We cannot force ourselves to believe anything rigidly and get away with it. To attempt to do so only builds to a day when there is a sudden shock revealing the charade, for growth must find its crack in the sidewalk and will not be stopped. Truth is a growing thing. I wrote a book on truth called Three Peaks, a model for understanding truth. And guess what? It's on Amazon.com.